horizontal or vertical biamping? This question comes from Alexis in Frankfurt, Germany, and he writes, what would be your preferred way to biamp? Uh, would it be vertical or horizontal, and why? Well, let me first explain the difference between, well, let's actually, let's, let, let, let's back up even further. Uh, th there are two ways that we can go about if we want to split up the duties. We can buy amp or buy wire. Buy wire is using one amplifier and two wires, two speaker cables, to feed the breakout on the back of a speaker. Now, not, not every speaker has a breakout, but most of them do. Most of them have twin sets of binding posts on their, on their rear, and one set, the top set usually, is for the, the tweeter, and the bottom set is for the woofer midrange. And there's a strap between them, so if you want to just have one, uh, one wire, one amplifier, you just keep the strap on. Otherwise, take the strap off, use two wires, uh, one has the, the wire you prefer for the top end, and the other has the wire you prefer for the bottom end. That's by wiring. By amping is when you do the same sort of thing, but you have two amplifiers. One for the top end, one for the bottom end. Now, what is horizontal and vertical by amping? Well, if we accept the fact that any time we by amp, by its very nature, two amps, we are using two amps, then it depends on how you're going to divide them up. So horizontal by amping is the most common, and that's where one amplifier does the bass frequencies. So left channel of, of uh, amplifier number one goes to the left woofers on the left channel, and the right channel goes to the right woofers of channel two, and then amplifier two um, uh, does the, the same for the, the tweeters. Vertical biamping is where you take an amplifier and one channel of that amplifier, of a stereo amplifier, feeds the top end, the tweeters, and the other channel of that amplifier number one feeds the woofers. So that's vertical versus horizontal. And I want to go back though and, and talk about how this all came to be and why we would even have biamping. When it first started years ago, it actually made sense, okay? And that's because amps of a long time ago, especially back when we had tube amplifiers with tube output stages, not like these BHKs that I'm sitting on that take advantage of the proper way to use a tube in an amplifier, which is in the voltage gain stage or in the input stage or both, whatever you want and a solid state output. That, that's the best of both worlds. And with these amplifiers, I don't see any reason to buy amp because they have oh, some of the sweetest top end on the planet and just bass that'll kick your ass. So these modern amplifiers don't really need or won't really give you any benefits by, the, by buy amping them. So, so don't spend the money. Uh, if, you're, if you want to spend money, and we're happy to have you do it. Um, get yourself a pair of mono blocks. That really does work. A separate amplifier for each left and right channel. I mean, there the differences are huge, okay? And, and explainable, and, and we could go over that if you wanted to. So, um, I, I'm just not a fan of, of bi-amping. But we're going to go back to why. So years ago, when we used to have a lot of tube amplifiers with tube output stages, they had pretty piss-poor bass. They were... Mm, because of their output transformers, they didn't go all that deep. The speakers, uh, many speakers, especially sealed box speakers, really demand a lot from an amplifier. And if you transformer and coupled, you're not going to be able to accommodate big impedance dips. You're just going to lose volume at those areas where the speaker's trying to, to reproduce bass, and it's doing so by trying to suck more power out of the amplifier. So what we did back then, because in those early days, solid state amplifiers had pretty poor top ends. I mean, they really struggled with having, you know, non-transistory sounding top ends. We would use a, a brute of a solid state amplifier for the bass and, and then a honey sweet tube amplifier uh, for the top end and sometimes even for the mid-range in a three-way. 
That's how biamping got started because we had amplifiers that weren't up to, to par in, in full range uh, performance. And there you could take advantage of one uh, that had you know, a, a spectacular top end and the other that had a wonderful bottom end. Combine the two, make sure they're gain matched so that they're at the same level, and then you have a great system. You've now taken advantage of the best of both worlds. Modern day amplifiers don't, most of them don't have these problems and so it's not really uh, advantageous to buy amp. So how come everybody wants to buy amp today? Well, <laughs> a lot of amplifier manufacturers would like to sell you more amps. Yeah, I would too. I'd love to sell you more amps, but I'm not going to do it uh, based on something that doesn't really give you a lot of advantage because that's bullshit and, and we don't do that. Um, so if you're going to buy amp, horizontal is, in my mind, clearly the best way to go. Have one amplifier that's just dedicated to the bottom end, it's grinding away, doing its thing, it's unaffecting the top end performance of the next amp. Lastly, why vertical at all? Well, the idea is that because most stereo amplifiers use a common power supply and most of the power is going to the base, right? So the tweeters take very little power. The idea is that if you vertically amplify, then you're only using half of the power supply for that bottom end or, or three-fourths of the power supply for the bottom end and the other quarter that's left over is, is nicely and easily running the top end. And that removes the load off of the amp. But there are so many variables like how big is your amp? How, how much is it actually struggling to reproduce bass? So if I had to do it, horizontal would be my choice. But I don't recommend it unless you really have amplifiers that, that aren't up to snuff to do what you want to do. And in that case, then go out and find yourself a sweet sounding top end tube amp and a brood of a bottom end, gain match them, and then have at it. All right. Thanks. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.